Hello, welcome back to Black City Coffee. Are we rolling? Let's do it again. <laughs> okay. Hi there, welcome back to Black City Coffee. I wanted to do a tutorial how I do pour over. There's a lot of technical ways on how to do it. Um, and it's good to know that information first and foremost, and it's always good to find something new in something as regular and routine as having a cup of coffee. So what I do, I wanted to just go through a couple of things. So uh, we are gonna go and taste our first blend because <laughs> I have all these samples that are left over from um, a roast that I was doing for the Bodhi competition. So I was like, what am I gonna do with all these random samples? Well, I bet we can find at least one good cup of coffee in here by blending them together when we have some Brazil and we have some Ethiopia. So that'll actually be our first blend caught on camera. All right, let's go through tools. Tool number one, I got this um, on a trip to Seattle to the uh, Starbucks roastery. Now, I'm not a big drinker of Starbucks, but for me to go into a huge establishment and see this huge ass roaster, that was pretty cool. So this is an everyday tool that I use for uh, measuring my coffee. Now it's 10 grams, which is uh, what they say is two tablespoons. Um, and I think that's gonna be a solid cup for a single serve of good coffee like ours. Next tool is uh, the grinder. Number one thing that you can do to um, upgrade your coffee if you haven't already is to get a good grinder. This is a burr grinder, a uh, canonical burr grinder like this. So, and it, and it doesn't speed, it's not so fast. So the big difference between this and say your blade grinder that you can get for 10 bucks on Amazon is, is a, a much better quality cup. So it's gonna grind the beans at a more consistent rate and you can see that when we are gonna grind some coffee beans today. So this one, um, I'll link everything that I have, specifically um, what I have in my coffee um, arsenal in the description and in the links below. So if you want it, you can get it. Okay, so we have this grinder. Then we have our kettle. Um, you don't have to get a fancy kettle like this, but if you're doing pour over, it is recommended that you have a particular spout like this. And the reason why is because you want uh, control over water flow. So if you were to get like a regular kettle that has like a wide mouth, it's really hard to control the flow of water. Um, and you'll see that as well too when you're doing specifically pour over. If you were just brewing something like AeroPress, then you can have a big wide spout, whatever kind of kettle that you want um, because you're not worried about water flow. Okay, next is your pour over vessel, I guess. Uh, this is a single serve one. You can get a bigger one like this and you know serve more people. So I think it's always good to, if you like pour over brewing, you could have two methods where if you have company over, you can definitely pull this guy out and brew more coffee for more people. But usually on the daily, it's just me. It's just one cup a day. So it's just this for me. Plus it's red, so it's pretty. So put that there. Um, another thing too is your cup. So I would say you don't want a huge cup because if you do that, you're gonna wanna brew more coffee and that kind of throws off the like ratio and I think that also throws off how much caffeine you should be having a day. Uh, so a standard cup, I don't even know how much, this is 12 ounces. Okay, so 12 ounces, I like the shape of this cup in particular. This was a gift from our dear friend Nathan and it's been my favorite cup ever since. It has like a stainless steel inside but it doesn't impart any weird steel flavors so that's good. Um, it's from Bodhi, one of our um, uh, bean sources and it's really nice cup. Anyway, the, sh the fact that it's shaped like this um, works double fold because when I brew stuff with AeroPress, I have to put my body weight into that AeroPress and I want that thing to kind of like hold the weight of that. So I, I definitely wouldn't want a cup that was like V-shaped, you know what I mean? But we're just doing pour over, so there's that. So we have our pour over vessel, our nice cup, our preferred cup that's not too big and not too small. Um, a lot of pour over tutorials would tell you the the gram weight to like water ratio, coffee to water ratio. 
and I'm kind of just going to eyeball it because I learned the technicality of it, which is one of these to about, I don't even know the grams of water, but it's basically this much water, okay? So <laughs> that's how I do it. I'm not telling you the technical way how to do it. I'm telling you how I do it, how I eyeball it. Because I don't think coffee has to be that serious for you to enjoy it. Okay, so I think we're all set. Our water is basically already boiled. Actually, it kind of came down in heat, so I'm gonna pop it on the stove for just a little bit and then come back. Um, and you wanna take your water uh, off when, it, when it's just about to hit boil. Okay. Anyway, while we wait for that to hit a little bit boiling point, and I can kind of tell too, once you've been brewing your, um, your water for a while, you can kind of tell with the sound. Um, in particular with this with this kettle, I just kind of know now after you've done it for a while um, when's the right time to pull it off. Other than that, you probably want to heat it to like I don't know. I'm gonna put I'm gonna research all that stuff for you and I'll write it on the side because I don't know at the top of my head. I eyeball everything, even though I learned the technical way in the beginning. So not to piss off any <laughs> coffee snobs. If I were to go back in time, I would get this type of kettle, like with this neck, uh, but it has like a temperature control so you could be like more precise and stuff. Um, this one you really have to listen and have done it for a while and maybe you maybe even boil the water too hot where you could burn your coffee. That's a very uh, real possibility and I definitely wouldn't want to do that even though I'm not like all serious about water and stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is rinse our filter so we don't taste um, paper in our coffee. And then I remember the first time when I did this, I did not throw the water away. <laughs> that was a rookie move. So don't be a rookie, throw the water away. You don't want that water. Okay, we're gonna throw it in here because I'm lazy. Cool, we got that going. Now we're going to, usually, you know, in my routine, I would um, grind my beans first, but it's all good. So what we're going to do is, that, like I said, we're going to have our first City Coffee blend right here. So let's blend this guy. What is this? First batch of the Brazil, just roasted yesterday. Second batch of the Brazil. Oh, we're getting close. Maybe it won't be, it'll just be Brazil. Let's just keep it Brazil then. Oh, we have a little bit more. It's, it's gonna be a blend. <laughs> and a little bit of the Ethiopia. Can you see it? A little bit. All right. Boom, right there. Let's top him off. It's all good. Oops. Okay, so here's our first blend. It's like, 10% Ethiopia, 90% Brazil. Let's see what happens. Boom, right here. Okay, pour over. You wanna set your grind to about medium. Uh, with this particular one, there's not just a hard medium, there can be like on the coarser side of medium or the finer side of medium. So let's just put this guy. Where am I at? I'm at the, I'm in the middle. And how you would adjust that is like, say you, say you brewed and then the water went through and it was super quick and maybe the cup was very light for you. And you're like, what? Um, you didn't get a full extraction of your beans. So you could dial it back on the coarseness and make it finer within the medium uh, little uh, section right here. And then the water would run through slower, which would mean you would get more extraction from the beans. So that's how you would kind of dial it in. And, and I'm sure every machine's a little bit different. So you just kind of have to find your way. And that's what I like about coffee. It can be quite personal. Okay, then we just hit grind. Or turn the dial. I always kind of do like a, a a dry one because there can be beans that are left here, um, and there always kind of is to kind of flush it and make sure I've I've really ground everything up. Okay, ooh, it smells good. And then, in every fashion, we give it a nice smell. 
because you're going to get ready. You're getting ready. You just woke up. It's like 6.30 in the morning. You haven't started your day. Oh, man. It smells good. All right. Cool. So what I'm getting, let me tell you. I'm getting um, coffee. <laughs> Toffee. Tomato. Tomato soup. Tomato bisque soup. It's quite savory. And... Uh, a little bit like stone fruit, jammy. Okay, cool. That goes in there. We're talking too much and the water's losing its heat. And then I level it out. I level it out. And before, when I first learned, you poke a little hole like that. I feel like you don't need to do that anymore. And then what you wanna do is with a controlled hand, just wet all of the grounds um, until you reach what they call the bloom. So you're allowing all the grounds to like soak up the water. I'm gonna be quiet when I do it again. Um, and not hitting the sides of the paper. So I'm slowly wetting all the grounds. And it looks like a little like a brownie, like a muffin. And it's really great if you see a lot of bubbles because then you know it's fresh. So I wait a little bit. And then I start in like concentric circles. And then this one I learned from uh, Chris Baca from Cat and Cloud. That you're looking for like a, um, the color change. So he'll start from the center and then just go out. In a controlled hand. And it's gonna be a little different every time just cause like you're human, you know, you're the one pouring the water. And in the morning, this is so great to just stop and meditate and be grateful for your day, be grateful for your coffee, where it came from, how it was roasted, the farmers that picked it, like that's what goes through my mind every day, I have coffee. And I can tell from the way, I won't fill the kettle all the way to the very top, um, I'll probably fill it to about here and then I'll just know like this is going to be enough water for me to work with. And I actually always have a little bit extra um, just from knowing. So you want your bed of grounds to be very like um, flat. Uh, before when I used to do this a big mistake or not mistake but just like a tell is like if you have this volcano, inverted volcano, and you have a lot of grounds at the top, and you haven't extracted everything. So you wanna to try to level it out as much as possible. Now I just did this, and I think when I was doing this, I turned this a little to the core side, right? And I could hear that this was actually running quite quickly as I was doing it. I didn't wanna interrupt myself. So I would say to myself like, okay, that's running a little too quickly for me. Um, I would dial this back in on the grind setting of my um, grinder and say that, oh, I want it to run a little bit slower, so I'll make the grind even finer. Okay. But that's okay, it's still gonna be good. I'm still gonna enjoy this cup of coffee for sure. But I'll know for the next time, okay, I'm gonna dial it in a little bit more. And then you have this guy and I'll let that kind of drain and dry out before I handle it and then just throw it away. And so there you go, you have your pour over a cup of coffee and I always 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 it's going to be really hot right now so you're not going to be able to taste all of the finer notes of this you might even burn your tongue a little bit so I let this sit I'll go to my desk um, and just check my email whatever for a good two to three minutes sometimes I forget it's like five <laughs> five or ten uh, and then I start drinking my cup of coffee and then it's cooled down and now you can really taste what's in your coffee. So it kind of works like wine. If you chill your wine, you're not gonna be able to taste all the finer notes in that wine. Does that make sense? Same thing with whiskey too. Um, so you wanna be able to taste it. And as you drink this coffee from hot to not so hot, maybe lukewarm and even cold, cause this will just sit on my desk until I'm done with all of my work in the morning. You're gonna taste different flavors in the coffee, which is always fun. So that's how I do pour over. Please share how you guys do pour over. Do you do the really technical thing 
or do you just eyeball it at the end of the day and not judge yourself so harshly because hey it's just a cup of coffee but we are trying to give respect to all of the things that make coffee great and interesting and passionate but um that's what i do on the daily so cheers well you wouldn't really say cheers with coffee i would, I would say mm, coffee. okay we'll see you next time here on black city coffee bye okay here we go here's the first blend Ethiopia, Brazil. Oh yeah. nice it's it kind of gives me the idea of like okay say brazil this particular bean it was it was kind of like a full city the way that i roasted it because i i wanted to elongate it and then when i did the ethiopia because of the bean and because of the nature of it and how dense it is and all that stuff um i was still able to roast a long period of time not that long but still able to bring out all the citrus so um what black sea is all about is the the light the citrus and all that stuff so i think this would be kind of cool to be like okay like maybe we have all these like full city roasts and wanna and do want to do like a a blend where we don't have to buy so much ethiopia but still bring in that city flavor good idea i see why people do blends now Definitely a breakfast blend, house blend. And it's still good. Because the question would arise like, are blends lesser quality? Are they a lesser coffee? Or, I mean, I'm sure that's true for some, but we can definitely put forward a good foot and say, we have a blend, it's still high quality. We're still getting that city vibe. But it could, it could be economical for us, for sure.